So it was, it was 2007, and uh, I was essentially out very much into body composition. Everything, we, we, our specialty in our lab is skeletal muscle, fat mass, and performance. And so it was 2007, and I was, I was the, the reigning paradigm at the time was essentially eating very frequently. So I was eating six meals a day. And uh, that was what it kind of looked like, right? So I had on the top, if you can't really see it, but there was, I ate oatmeal and whey three times a day, and then broccoli, sweet potato, and, uh, and chicken twice a day, and then pre-bed egg whites, right? So the thing is, I was trained three times a day, and it was, it was super, it was super hard, and I was super inflamed. And I had heard about uh, ketogenic dieting. It was hard to lose fat. I said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a ketogenic diet. Well, what did I do? Basically, I said, I'm going to do my version of a ketogenic diet. It was everything that was up there, right, uh, minus the carbohydrates. So, right, you know, basically, that's what I ended up, what, that's what I ended up doing. Um, that was my first, like, try at a ketogenic diet. But it wasn't really a ketogenic diet, right? It was just all protein, basically, broccoli and no fat. So, <clears throat> essentially, I, it got me lean, but I said to myself, man, this is, like, really, this is horrible, right? <laughs> Uh, I felt like that. <laughs> so, so I concluded to myself, there's no way that you could sustain something like this. There's no way you could sustain ketogenic diet and you just feel awful. It got you lean, but no bueno. Um, so anyway, 2009, f flash forward, <clears throat> my great friend Sean Wells, I'm like eating a really like lean meal. Uh, and he's like, why are you so afraid of fat? Remember that? It's like, why are you so afraid of fat? So it's like, he started, he's talking about, like, this is not keto. Like, this is keto. So, uh, and then if you go here, then I met Dr. Dom in 2009 at Experimental Biology Conference. I was studying a similar substance to BHB, and we hit it off. And Dom's twice as big as I am, eating sardines, uh, and, uh, you know, they didn't have, like, ketogenic products back then. And he's eating once to twice a day. I'm like, the guy's got twice as much muscle as I have. He's eating, <laughs> you know, one, one meal a day. So we talked and I, and I became very fascinated with ketogenic dieting. <clears throat> 2011, Ryan Lowry and I were at the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And we got an opportunity to watch Steve Finney and, um, and Jeff Folick, who you just saw, speak. And it was a very profound and compelling presentation like Dr. Volick's was today. And essentially what Dr. Volick and, and Finney did is they printed a lot of great research and someone came to the podium and said, what do we have with resistance trained athletes and muscle growth? And basically they said, we don't have that data. So Ryan and I looked over to each other and we said, we have a lot of work to do. And so basically this short presentation here is gonna show a, a little snippet of the work that we've been doing in this area. So I'm gonna do it in a QA and a format, right? So, what does human performance research look like? So um, some people have had a chance to come over to our laboratory. Victoria came over yesterday. She's like a really good friend of ours, and she's the most, thank you, <laughs> most awesome person. But uh, basically, what's, what's it look like? I'm going to play a video. It's a little loud. But this is kind of like, it seriously is what it's like in our lab kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. So check this out.
Anything you could imagine is 21,000 square feet that you would want to look at for performance for ketogenic dieting and exogenous ketones, we have it. It's, oh, it's on point. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, so that's kind of what human performance looks like. So is there a metabolic advantage to ketogenic dieting? That's like one of the most controversial questions out there, right? But that's okay, because I'm used to that. So uh, we look here and we talk about metabolic advantage, right? Well, we're talking about really fat loss here. So if you move forward here, this is a study that we actually published in Journal of Applied Physiology, okay? And um, if you look, basically that's calorie consumption. It's over to your right. And uh, we had three groups of animals here. And basically this is how much they ate. We said you can eat whatever you want to the rats. So here, this, these rats here are standard diet. That's like low fat dieting, okay? And that's how many calories they ate. This is the ketogenic group, and that's the Western diet. That's like McDonald's. That's how many calories they ate. Again, it was ad libitum. Um, you could click forward. Now, this is total protein consumed, all right? So basically, the standard chow group ate the same amount of protein as a ketogenic group, okay? Less calories, but the same amount of protein, right? So basically, they're eating less calories, but the same amount of protein. Let's look at what happens to body fat. Forward. So we look at uh, fat here, and this right here is the Western diet fat. That is the ketogenic group fat. And then that right there is the, uh, the standard uh, healthy diet. So even though they're eating less calories, they have less fat there, okay? But even if it was the same, they're eating more calories and they have less fat, right? So I think, it, and, and protein was matched for. This is looking at their organs. This is a ketogenic diet. Like, that's the Western diet. It's a standard American diet that we see, and that's the keto diet. As you can see, it, it, to me, that transformed my life when I saw this, because you do research and you have those aha moments. It looks to me like, you know, an anatomy figure, right? And so, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. So go, why is this the case, okay? So there's some, a concept known as feed efficiency. Who knows what feed efficiency is? Okay, basically, you ever been to a point where you looked at a pizza or brownie and you gained fat? That's high feed efficiency, okay? So the lower feed efficiency is, the, more, uh, the less fat you're storing per gram of food eaten. Does that make sense? So you want feed efficiency to be down in our case. This right here is a Western diet, so a high-carb diet. That's a high-carb diet plus exogenous ketones that we fed the rat, and then here, is um, a ketogenic diet, ketones go up more, and here's a ketogenic diet plus exogenous ketones. Feed efficiency goes down in a dose-dependent fashion as ketones go up. Very interesting, right? Now, why is this the case? If we look at our next slide, um, we had three groups here. It, you, I told you uh, the, the groups here. We had the ketogenic diet, the Western diet, and the, and the low... Uh, carb diet plus ketone. So if you look here, this is brown adipose tissue. Who, who's heard of brown adipose tissue? Most everyone, right? It's a very thermically active tissue. So, uh, so if we look here at this, um, next slide. Yep. Brown fat from the Western diet, the, the carb diet, to the ketogenic diet, to the ketogenic diet plus the ketone salts, we see that brown fat goes up in a dose-dependent fashion, right? So it's that thermically active tissues go up, maybe making them less efficient. Now here, we're looking at lipoprotein lipase, and it's kind of a similar mixture. We have standard diet, ketogenic diet, and then uh, basically a standard uh, carbohydrate diet plus moderate amount of ketones, and then a high amount of ketones. And you see lipoprotein lipase expression go down, and that's an important enzyme for bringing fatty acids into adipose tissue. So these are very intriguing, possibly nutrient partitioning effects that ketones may be giving you. So, okay, the next question is, can you have your cake and eat it too? Now, if you, anyone who knows me knows that I like sweets, okay? I have a really big sweet tooth. And so one of the big things is, like, um, I love sweets, and so that was one of the things that I've, I've learned, like, on the ketogenic diet. So can you? 
right? So uh, here, this is some stuff that we have uh, here. This is some, some recipes, keto recipes I've made. Those are keto Oreos. That's a big, giant keto cookie. <laughs> um, so next, there must be a metabolic advantage or I would be obese. Uh, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Greatest thing I've ever eaten in my life, like to this day. <laughs> And then you go out there, who's been to ketogenic.com booth? Like, I've been, like, taking a lot of stuff over there, food. So they have all these recipes there. <clears throat> and, um, and then, of course, you go, they have the keto meals now. The, uh, the, uh, the proven exogenous ketones tastes like Yoo-Hoo. Um, and so there's, like, a, it's very easy to actually kind of perform, like, in this ketogenic environment now. <clears throat> Next question, like Dr. Volk said, can you gain muscle on a ketogenic diet? Now, we did this study in our lab, and I hypothesized that basically that you would basically lose more fat maybe with the ketogenic diet, but maybe not lose, gain as much muscle, right? I mean, that's the simple answer that everyone gets. So what did we see? Um, it's hard to see those. Can you guys see those graphs or no? Okay, well, anyway, if you're looking here, it's hard to see these graphs here, but essentially both the keto group and the carb group went up to the same extent. Like they gained as much, um, as much lean mass. And that studies in press and journal strength conditioning research. Next slide. This is strength. Can you gain strength? This is looking at essentially squat strength and bench strength. You have the keto diet and the high carb diet both gain the same amount of squat and bench press strength. So basically, you can gain as much muscle and as much strength. Now, you also have to understand, we keto adapted them for two weeks, and then we trained them. They had been on carbs their whole life. So technically, you're at a disadvantage going into that, right? You have to adapt. There's no way you're going to fully adapt to the keto diet in just two weeks, and then we train them, right? So they still made the same amount of muscle gains. Can you stimulate protein synthesis if we look at the molecular level? We looked at this. Here, so here's the thing, like I've done a lot of training models with resistance training with rats, and it's not the easiest, like it's not the easiest problem to solve, right? So one, like the first time I said, hey, I want to do a resistance training model of rats, I asked my friends, what do you do? I said, well, just put like a weight on them and put them in a pool until they drown. I was like, you know, I, I don't think that mimics what we would normally do, right? <laughs> so my, my next friend comes up and he goes, hey, you know what, build a, a, a rat squat rack. So he does that. He builds a rat, rat squat rack, and what do they do? They shock them every time they go down. I'm like, I've trained with people, and they're like, squat or die, like get this next rep or die, but literally, they're getting shocked every time. So I was like, yeah, I don't think that mimics things, but they like to run, right? So you put them in this, and they like to run. They're just running around, running around, and then you, every week, you up the resistance, and their calves get really jacked. <laughs> so uh, I'll show you that data, uh, but this is looking at protein synthesis here at the molecular level. Again, we published this, uh, I think, Journal of Applied Physiology. Anyway, this protein synthesis, both, both are going up in both the, the carb diet as well, as well as the keto diet to the same extent. At the molecular level, protein synthesis is going up to the same extent. <clears throat> What happens to glycogen stores on a ketogenic diet? Dr. Volek spoke about that with his, uh, with his athletes. This, again, is some rat rodent data that we have. And we basically saw that, yes, this is looking at glycogen levels. You have sedentary on uh, your guy's left, the, the uh, carb diet. And then to your guy's right, you have the keto diet. And there's no statistical difference in muscle glycogen levels when these animals are resistance training or sedentary. So this data, animal data here, uh, corroborates very well with Jeff Volek's human data with keto adapted athletes. Something phenomenal is going on where they are able to uh, actually restore glycogen levels. So this is fascinating. Now, I'm not showing this data, but one thing is we looked at things like, uh, you know, amino acid levels. And it seems that like gluconeogenesis on things like, um, or basically like gluconeogenesis of like the really uh, or catabolisms, excuse me, of the highly anabolic amino acids, like the BCAs, are getting spared by ketones. Um, but things like alanine, for example, are getting utilized at a higher level. So this is what we want. Um, <clears throat> so the next question is, do ketones play a role? Um, 
Okay, and we first tested this in a cyclic ketogenic model. So who's heard of cyclic ketogenic dieting? Most everybody. So what we did was we purposely didn't allow athletes to adapt. We put them on an extreme training model and we created a calorie deficit. And what we did was we had them go on keto five days a week and then we carved them up on the weekends. So they never had a chance to adapt, right? Um, and in fact, you could see this here. Uh, if you look at the ketone levels to your guys left, the squares are the cyclic group. Notice that they, their ketones weren't elevated to like Thursday or Friday. See? Because on the weekends they were carving up. Now the ketogenic group, which is the circles on top, were keto every single day. Now what you notice is that they both lost the same amount of mass. Remember, we were dieting them, we were doing interval training and high intensity resistance training. They both lost the same amount of mass. If you step on the scale, you'd say, great, both diets work equally as well. But is the scale everything? So when you look at, at, uh, next, you can see here that basically the ketogenic group lost fat mass. The cyclic group did not lose much. What does that mean what's happening in the cyclic group? A lot of that weight was muscle. That's indicating to us that ketones themselves may be sparing lean mass. So that's very, very important to us because it's showing ketones might have an important role in sparing lean mass. Um, so if we look here, uh, this is a test uh, that we're, we're looking at. Um, basically, uh, we looked at ketones, and we went, that's a standard diet, okay? You have a ketogenic diet. This is only after a week's time. We then took a standard diet, and we gave um, a moderate amount of ketones. It'd be like two packets of the keto OS equivalent a day. Moderate amount of ketones for a week. Protein synthesis in the calves went up. If you look at high amount of ketones, that'd be like more, a couple packs a day, it, protein synthesis went up again. So it's conceivable that, uh, that, these, uh, that ketones themselves may have an, exert an anabolic effect. So this is very new and interesting research for us because it, it's important. Because again, we're talking like over there, they're talking about cancer, right? What's a huge uh, thing that occurs with cancer? Cachexia, okay? So this is not just about building muscle here. It's about saving muscle in situations where people might lose their lives because of it, right? So that's why I think, it's, that's why I think this is very important uh, information. Okay, do ketones improve balance? Uh, this is like a, another rat study here. So if you look here, um, <laughs> that's kind of how you measure balance with a rat. It's a roto rod. Uh, and anyway, at least with these guys, <laughs> at least with these guys, you go to the standard diet, and then the standard diet, plus, you see MS, that's moderate amount of ketones. Again, like that'd be like two packets of the keto S equivalent. And then you see the standard diet plus the high ketones. Both of them are improving balance, at least on this, uh, on this model here. So can ketones help with cognitive impairments? This is something actually um, that uh, we're uh, motivated by. We got inspired by... Uh, Dr. Mary Newport, she's in our lab here, and she's a sweetheart. I mean, Dr. Mary Newport is a, is a sweetheart, and uh, she's become a really good friend with uh, us, and she's helping us in our lab explore, like, exogenous ketones with um, cognitive impairment. So this is actually her. She, we're doing a biomechanical analysis on her. You move forward. That's her. She's got her digital avatar on her right there. You can look at her mechanics. But we're talking about using this stuff in people who have cognitive impairments, because when you have cognitive impairment, where does it manifest itself? right, from a motor standpoint, okay? So it's very important that we can look at these things in our lab. Uh, that's actually Dr. Cunane's also an inspiration. He's in our lab here uh, playing golf, simulated golf. Um, so Parkinson's, we know, is associated with, like, uh, rigid muscles, slowed movements, um, <clears throat> and things of that nature, right, trembling, okay? So these are things that are important, and so this is an interesting thing that we're really getting into. Um, if you look over to your right, those are individual subjects on a ketogenic diet, and that's improvement in their scores, percent improvement in their scores. You went from 20, 21%, 46%, 46%, 23%, 81% percent improvements in one month's time on a ketogenic diet. The patient, one of the, one of the subjects we're working with in our lab said, you know what my doctor told me? Today's your, your, your best day, and tomorrow's going to be worse. And then tomorrow will be your best day, and the next day will be worse. Really. Because in this study here, they're improving drastically on a ketogenic diet. 
So this tells us this very interesting information because we know that in Parkinson's that the brains, the dopamine producing cells in the brain are not able to uh, take up and utilize glucose as well. So here is a case study that we have here with a Parkinson's patient where we gave him ketones. So what you're looking over here, this is basically, we, have, we can track eye movement. We put goggles on Israel, we have targets and we can track their movement. And what we're seeing here is this is a normal amount of targets that you can hit with your eyes, okay? We go here, that's the subject before, and that's the subject after ketones. The first time he took ketones, essentially, his hands were like this. He came into the laboratory and basically asked, um, you know, he, he wanted to put my information in his phone, and he couldn't, okay, because he was shake, shaking. At the end of taking the ketones, he was looking at it. I said, why, why are you doing this? He goes, my hands aren't shaking. Walked out, one of my research assistants was giving him his information, okay? Took his phone and put his information right in there, right? So uh, this to us is very powerful information. Um, last thing, real quick, can it increase longevity? We've been doing, we, took, we promised you guys this last year, we've been doing a, a lifelong model with ketogenic diet, we're almost done. This is an animal model right here. So if we look, look here, uh, basically, okay, one minute, just, okay? So here, what we're looking at is, Middle age, we start giving it to them at middle age, okay? Ketones. You have a standard low-fat diet, okay? You have a ketogenic diet. Then you have a standard low-fat diet plus the ketone salts, okay? Now, at 20 months of age, you see that the standard diet, even though it's healthy and it's based on standard recommendations, those rats are dying off. This is the amount of age, okay? Um, okay? And this is 20 months of age. The keto group, eight out of eight rats are still alive. The ketone salt group, seven out of eight rats are still alive at 20 months. They're on a standard low-fat diet plus ketones. They're pure keto. Then you go to old age, right? And then you have the standard diet. 50% of them have dropped off. Then you have the keto diet and the salt diet, okay? So my point is that ketones themselves, we're look, we're, next year we'll present at epigenics. We're looking at brain, heart, liver, everything you can imagine, stem cells on ketogenic dieting, and that information we'll be presenting uh, next time. Uh, I want to say something real quick, like um, there's something like uh, my, my good friends, Ryan Lowry, Brian Underwood here, uh, motivate me a lot. And one of the things that, that, they say, that they say a lot is, and Ryan gave me this quote, is think about this for a second. When we're presenting this information, this is very important. We're at a scientific conference, right? But the thing is, there's, there's studies, like my cousin, for example. My cousin died uh, around 20 years of age of epilepsy. Never heard of the ketogenic diet, right? Um, I, had, um, I went to a conference, the last conference I went to, I, I talked about this stuff. And someone's daughter was 36 years of age, said, I never heard of ketogenic dieting epilepsy. Never heard of it. For, we've known about it for over 100 years. We have to get this information out and that's everyone in this room and 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 we're going to get a lot of a lot of pushback with this research we're going to get a lot of pushback there's going to be a lot of pushback we can be angry back or we can do what ryan lowry says we can make positivity louder and the biggest thing i want to say is this is a really good quote next um i can't yeah Let's see if i can see the quote if not us, then who? If not now, then when? And that's all I have to say. Thank you.